Hello boys and girls. I wonder if I asked you today what your favourite type of sweet or chocolate is. What would you say? Maybe you can think of an answer really quickly. For me it takes a bit longer because to be honest I quite like most of them. But if I was going to choose from a box of celebrations I think I probably would choose the Malteser one. They're really tasty. And I suppose because this is going out on Facebook I maybe should say lots of other brands of sweets are available. I saw the results of a survey recently and it was quite interesting because it said that whenever people are eating a box of celebrations, three out of every 10 people will leave the same sweet to the end. There's one that three out of 10 people don't really like and I wonder can you guess which one it is? It's actually this one, the bounty. I was quite surprised at that. And I'm sure you may be thinking, why on earth is she talking to us about celebrations today? Well. This little sweet, the bounty, is going to help us remember the word that we're going to use to describe God today, because that word is bountiful, as well as being a little sweet that we find in our celebrations. The word bounty came from the Latin language a long time ago, and it came from a word that means good things. And we're going to describe God as bountiful, which means the same as generous. He is a bountiful God who loves to give good things to his children. In fact, there's a verse in the book of James in the Bible that says, every good and perfect gift comes from above. All the good things that we have in our lives come from God. And maybe at the minute you're feeling like lots of things are being taken away from you. You're not able to go to school the way you usually do. Maybe there are lots of friends that you're not able to see at the minute. Maybe there are places that you can't go. Maybe there are people who you usually see, but you have to talk to them on the telephone. And maybe you feel like lots of things are being taken away. But today we're going to spend just a short time thinking about some of the things that our amazing, bountiful God has given to us. And to do that, the first thing that we need to do is just look out through the window and see the beautiful world that God has made for us. We can look at the sun, the moon, the stars, the plants, the trees, the animals. It's amazing. And if we look at the plants, God made them. He knows exactly what they need and he gives them what they need. He sends the sunshine, he sends the rain, even though we sometimes complain about the rain. The plants need the rain to grow. God knows that and he sends it. If we look at the little birds that fly around, God knows what they need and he sends them what they need. It's the same with us. God made us, he knows what we need and he will supply our needs. Now that doesn't mean that we go to God with a big long shopping list of all the latest things that we would love to have. That's not the way it works. But we can trust in God to give us what we need. Now I wonder if I said to you today, what is the thing you need the most? I wonder what you would say. Well, God knows what we need the most. You see, you and I have a problem called sin. We have all sinned. The Bible says all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Sin is the wrong things that we think, say and do that break God's laws. It's the good things that we don't do. And it's the times whenever we go our own way instead of going God's way. And our sin keeps us away from God because God is perfect. It keeps us out of God's perfect home in heaven. And God knew that the thing that we need most is to be rescued from our sin. And that is why he sent us the most precious gift that we could ever receive. He sent his own son, Jesus, to earth. He was born as a tiny baby. We remember that at Christmas time. He grew up and he went to a cross to die, to take the punishment for my sin and for yours. But as we said last week, Jesus didn't stay dead. He rose again and he's alive today in heaven. And if we ask God to forgive us, if we're sorry for those wrong things that we have done, we ask God to forgive us, he will. So let's imagine our sin a bit like a test in school and every single thing is wrong. If we ask God to forgive us, it's as if this happens. It's all forgiven. It's all gone. But more than that, he doesn't just forgive our sin. But he takes the perfect record of Jesus who had never sinned and that account is given to us. Isn't that absolutely amazing? And if we have trusted in Jesus to forgive our sin, 
We can know that we are friends with God. We're not separated from God anymore. We know that God will always be with us to help us no matter what we face. And one day, when our life on this earth is over, we will have a home in heaven one day. I'm going to share a verse with you and it's one of my very, very favourite verses from the Bible. And it's from John chapter 10, verse 28. And it says, I give them eternal life and they will never perish and no one will snatch them out of my hand. If you have trusted in Jesus to forgive your sin, you can be sure that your sins are forgiven and that one day you will live forever in heaven with him. And it says there, no one will snatch them out of my hand. That also means nothing. That means not coronavirus, not self-isolation, not social distancing. Nothing can snatch you from God's hand. Isn't that amazing? Well, Whenever we trust in Jesus to forgive us for our sin, God doesn't just stop giving us things. He doesn't just say, okay, that's it, your sins are forgiven. You've got eternal life in heaven someday, and that's it. Oh no, our amazing, bountiful God just keeps giving us things. And we can't talk about all the things that God has given up to us today, because not only would it take up all the service time, but it would probably take up all afternoon and all evening, and maybe even tomorrow as well. We just could talk for a really long time about all the amazing things that God has given to us. But we're just going to take a couple of minutes to think of two of them that are going to be really useful for us in the next few days and weeks. The first thing is, he gives us family. Now, I don't just mean the people that we live with, but I mean also our church family. And even though in our church family we can't be together at the moment, isn't it amazing that we can still pray for each other? We can still encourage each other. And even though we're far apart, we can, we can also help each other to love Jesus more. And there are people praying for you today that you would continue to love Jesus more. And another thing that God gives to us is strength. Now, I don't just mean big muscles because, you know, some of us have them, some of us don't. But what I mean is that God helps us to deal with the things that we face. Maybe some of you are worried about not being at school at the moment. Maybe you find that a little bit worrying, a little bit scary. Maybe you're a bit sad that there are friends that you can't see. Maybe you're a bit sad that there are family members you can't see for a while. If you ask God to help you, he will give you the strength to face whatever it is that you are facing today. There's a famous Christian that many of you will have heard of called Corrie ten Boom. And she was born in the Netherlands and during her life she faced some really, really difficult things and went through some really, really hard things. And whenever she was quite young, maybe about the same age as some of you today, she said to her dad, Dad, I don't know what I'm going to do if really sad things happen. I don't know what I'm going to do if really, really worrying things happen. And her dad said, Corey, whenever we go on to the train, when do I give you your ticket? And Corey thought about it and said, well, Dad, you give me the ticket whenever we're just getting onto the train. He said, exactly. I don't give it to you before you need it. And you see, it's the same with God, because God will give us the strength we need just when we need it. So no matter what you're going through, talk to God about it and he will give you the strength that you need to face it. No matter how worrying or how scary or how sad the things are, he will be right there with you. And we started off today thinking about the bounty sweet and how some people when they're eating the celebrations they don't really like it too much. And sometimes with sweets like that, they're often left to the bottom and forgotten about. And sadly, I think we do that as well sometimes. We forget to say thank you to our bountiful God for all the amazing things that he has given to us. So today, maybe after the service is over, why not spend some time with the people that you're with today talking about the things that you can say thank you to God for and then spend some time talking to God to say thank you. So today we have thought about some of the things that our bountiful God has given to us. All the good gifts and of course the best one is his son Jesus. Now of course it'll soon be time to update our posters. God is Alpha and Omega and then God is bountiful and of course next week we'll come back to add on C. Now one good thing about having our church services at home and we're watching online is we can have a little bit of a snack. So I can tell what I'm going to be eating during the sermon. I'll talk to you soon.